Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy world. In the time of COVID-19, a lot of people are on unemployment, unemployed, or have debts over their heads. Transparent Credit Repair can help you with these things. Contact them at www.transparentcreditrepair.com. Or you can call them at 862-250-5122. They help you with your credit report, help you teach you about finances so you may get some debt off of your credit line and take some stress off of your life. So please do yourself a favor. If debt is over your head and causing you to stress, you do not need to get any sicker during the coronavirus. Please Call 862-250-5122 or go to www.transparentcreditrepair.com. Tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you and you may get something special. With that being said, for this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast, we have somebody very special for you to meet and talk to. We talked to Dr. Inky of the Conscious Community Movement was getting into hip-hop and the rabbit got the gun song not only is making noise but is bringing awareness to people who may walk the walk talk the talk but don't live the truth that they profess to show you he has a lot to say in this interview so i want you to tune in and when i come back with the rest of my commentary you see the outcome of what was given to me from this great interview please stay tuned peace and blessings everybody this is career for heritage hip-hop and heritage hip-hop is bringing you something special today because we got a person that doesn't just do music he lives the lifestyle that he preaches and he's all about health of the mind and body please introduce yourself to the people peace to the family my name is dr inky um and some people that have just heard the music they figure it's doctor like Dr. Dre, like some come to that effect. But no, it's, <laughs> I, I am actually a naturopathic doctor, so I'm actually an ND. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like um, my equivalent to day job, even though I don't have a boss. You know, I, I say all the time my children and the people that I help are my bosses. But um, but yeah, that's that's what it is. So I want to say salute to you because. Health is a fad for many, but for a lot of people who know that there's a lot of evils in the world, health is a regulatory lifestyle. And so is hip-hop. And the messages in both were always to understand your environment and elevate yourself out of negativity. So that's what I want to base our interview on today. And um, I've been following you before when you were called Minister Inky. So I've seen a lot of videos and I got a lot of the messages, but I would love for you to describe what is health and how do a people that's devoid of the knowledge of health become healthy? Um, crazy. All right, so you, you said a couple things. So, all right, so the first thing, um, I actually am an ordained minister. I got ordained a long time ago. So, like, I take titles serious. You know what I'm saying? I'm from 158th yeah. Street. And I'm from the era where, you know, like, um, you know, if you called yourself something, it stood for something. That's what you stood on. Like, that was your square, you, you know. So the newer era, people kind of create titles for themselves, and they flip it and bounce. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of the same as people on the street pretending to be gangsters. That's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't mm-hmm. pretend to or a doctor if you're not actually ordained or you don't actually have the degree or the certification, you know what I'm saying? But So I was a minister, and, you know, I was, um, I guess my story kind of starts, my my youngest daughter at the time, Amber, she was coming home from school with her two sisters, and uh, a nurse fell asleep at the wheel and, like, ran into them and, she had her neck and spine broken, her pelvis was crushed, her left leg was crushed. And, you know, so the doctor was like, basically, she'll never walk again, you know, that kind of thing. And um, long story 
story short, I was able through uh, herbs and nutrition to heal her um, neck, spine, pelvis, everything. I even did her rehab. And then, um, you know, that combined with a couple other urban legends started to, you know, the people just started to kind of flood me. Like, um, prior to that, like, everybody had heard that um, my son's mom had diabetes. And, you know, they, you know, a lot of people close to the way they saw me reverse her diabetes. They saw me do the same thing for my aunt. So um, the situation with Amber plus some other events, just like kind of people just start gravitating to me, asking me certain questions. And, you know, long story short, it eventually grew to the point where I had to choose between helping people um, and working. So um, I eventually had to quit and kind of find a way to go full time with, with helping folks out. And, you know, it's, it's been a huge blessing turn my entire life around. Definitely nothing I planned on as a child. I, this is like a total, this not even a 360 for me. Like this is a, a 360 million degree change for me. Like people, <laughs> people out, literally can walk past me in the street. Like my energy just so way different. Like one of my friends from uh, like 20 years ago, he died from coronavirus and we were having an online memorial, and the people are in the memorial, and I'm speaking, and they listening, and they like, yeah, you know, we, you know, they doing it. And it's not until I say, yeah, and, you know, back in the day, you know, fancy black pesos, and woo-woo, everybody on the whole call went crazy, like, oh, yo, I'm just trying to know you do So I'm like, yeah, this is real. <laughs> people don't even like, no, people looking right at me and listening to me speak don't know it's me. Like, it's crazy how much a change can uh, can really have some, uh, you know, how, how much a change can really work, you know. But um, but that's what I'm, I'm known around the world for now at this point. You know, lucky, lucky enough to, um, through one of Dr. Sabi's wives, to be able to continue to um, do the research that Sabi was doing and then get tapped to help provide some supporting data for uh, the Nick Cannon documentary. So, you know, that's that's the grind, you know. Outside of that, you know, I just was on the road on tour with Ha Ha Davis. We went around the country, you know, comedy. Um, I try to find ways to, you know, speak to more audiences and crowds and, you know, without making shit weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do conscious music. Like, my... So if you if if someone listens to my album, the last thing they're going to think is like this is a conscious guy, this is a conscious album, like this I'm I'm like light years away from anything Talib Kweli ish or, or, or like J. Cole ish, like this is it's not that. Like when I do something I want people to enjoy it for what it is. Like I don't want I don't I don't bring consciousness so much into the music or into comedy, you know, when people come to watch comedy, so they want to sit down and laugh. That's it. They don't want to have a school lesson. When people listen to music, they don't want a school lesson. So, you know, I I I, I will speak, you know, at the right times and, and things like that, but I, I try to just, you know, keep everybody driving in their they lanes and keep everybody in, the, in their comfort zone and just, you know, be creative about finding new ways to get the information out to people because we need it. And, and now we're in quarantine, and I'm looking around at all this misinformation going around the coronavirus. I'm the only person with an actual testimony healing somebody from coronavirus online. I'm, I'm just looking around at all these people talking crazy. I ain't seen nobody except me produce a sick person that they made well again. Like, I, I haven't seen that yet. So I'm like, man, this is really crazy. Mm. Hmm. Actually, it's not because we're in the age of fanaticism where everybody wants to be somebody but don't really want to live up to who they say they are. So I'm glad you, you, you spoke about what you said in the beginning because that's real. Bro, let me just say this because you just touched on something right there, and I got some bars on the album about that. I said <laughs> everybody wants a check but nobody wants the hours. Pretty much, you know, Pretty much. and just you just you just nailed that right there. That's exactly that feeling I was trying to express. 
Yeah. And, and see, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the modus operandi of the American culture. As long as you have a dream, you're going to sell it to those who believe you. Billy Dans once said, um, a liar is the most dangerous person in the world because a liar wants you to believe in the happiness that in the in the in the happiness they believe they don't have basically. It's a person who's unhappy with who they are, so they lie to make a facade to seem special so they can get attention. And we have a lot of attention seekers in today's society, whether they call them social influencers, if we call them I don't know, politicians, we call them entertainers. A lot of people don't have an identity and they're latching for an, an ability to be something that they're not. How do you fight that with your teaching, your life, your principles, and your music? Um, mm, it's not really something that I think that people can fight for other people. I think that's more of an internal struggle. It just mm -hmm. depends on your moral compass. So um, people, and, and, and it really is, I think, a, a, a individual thing because some people are satisfied with the look of a thing, you know, the surface look, like making it look like you have money, but you really don't. Like like you got a lot of guys on online, like they're supposed to be economic gurus, but they're living off your donation. You know what I mean? Like to me, that right there offsets the information I'm going to get from you immediately. Like, right. wait a minute. If you're an economic guru, you should almost be teaching for free if, if you come under the conscious banner and your main goal is to uplift. Right. Now, if you're just a commercial entity purely out for the, for the brand, by all means, I mean, do what you do. Get your back. But that's why right. that's why I'm at with titles. You see what I'm saying? So if you put a mm -hmm. title on yourself, then it, and it for then then now you got to live up to the title. So the moment you put that that title on yourself, I feel like it creates responsibility. You know that that's kind of why, like I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a black sheep in some in a lot of circles because I, I start a lot of trouble, or at least people feel like I start a lot of trouble because, like you know, I'm vocal about quote-unquote conscious rappers that are making money as a conscious rapper, but there's no conscious end process to the money. You know what? Don't go too fast. Let's build this process up so we can catch people up. Because I, th I think a lot of people, they're learning who you are on, the, on our platform, and they really got to understand the things that you say and, and how you feel. So before we go too far... Let, let's keep it music and then go back to other things. You had a you have a video out called a Rabbit Got the Gun. Yeah. And and that song to people who don't understand what they say is, Oh, this is how to rob fifty cent all over again. But the names that you pull out and what you're saying is more deeper than a rap song. It's actually a message of um, accountability. Can you can you speak on that and what, uh, what, to what you said? Yeah, yeah. I mean, those those things kind of were were like also being interwoven into the song, but the song itself like really came from frustration amongst the community, feeling like. There's a lot of things going on that people should be getting checked about. But mm -hmm. be, because it's a quote-unquote spiritual movement, people are able to move like sharks and wolves amongst those people because there's no street-level retribution. Whereas even in the street, which is supposedly composed of savages to make up a savage culture, um, there's still boundaries, and those boundaries are enforced. So I'm like, okay, I'm feeling the sentiment from the community. I'm like, you know what? Before somebody goes crazy, because I feel the emotion. You can feel the emotion before shit goes all the way super left. Like, excuse my language, but before things go yeah, but really left, 
you can feel that emotion. So I said, you know what? And, and I know that because I, I personally saved uh, somebody who's infamous that's in that song. I saved his life because people were literally about to shoot him. Mm-hmm. And I was with him, and they was like, wait a minute, hold on. That's Dr. Inky. What is he even doing with that guy? A war right. mission. <laughs> and then later on told me about the situation. I'm like, damn, okay. I, I got to just start distancing myself from certain people because that could have went totally different. Like, had I had the person not recognized me, I could have just been caught up as collateral damage in somebody else's nonsense. Right. So in my mind, I'm like, at this point, when I decide to sit down with the music, I'm like, you know what? Let me let me experiment and see if I can create a, a healthier, you know, like an alternative way for people to deal with that energy. You know what I'm saying? Like if I put it in a song, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like people can... It can serve on one level as a warning to people that feel like they're getting over on people. Like, bro, it's only a limited time before somebody, you know what I mean? Like, don't think, conscious people are people that were in the street that have gotten older and decided to make some changes. Like, I'm like, but don't think that you, like, you got to chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, something's going to happen to you or somebody might be trying to get you and may want to get your lady, your baby. You you know, like, you got to be careful. You know, you know, you so... I just wanted to create a safer way for people to address those that negative energy and then make it twofold where it could also tell the people that are propagating that negative energy, hey, slow down, man. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And some of these people, you know, you don't know where their mind is at. You know what I mean? So, um, but the craziest part about the song, and, and I, I know I'm getting long-winded, but the craziest thing is, I didn't expect, like, I put that song on the album, like, that's my conscious song. So people was like, wait, that's not a conscious song. I'm like, well, that's what conscious is getting for me. So but it, but I put it is, that though. song but it, on it is, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, well, but I didn't I didn't think that way because I'm like, I'm, I'm pistol whipping people. I'm robbing people. I'm like, hey, this is probably not the direction they thought. They, they People were probably thinking, like, he's going to be talking about, like, meditation and pineal glands and all kinds of like, and I'm like, nah, we're not going to do that one. So, but I didn't expect other people to like it. Like right now on the um, college and underground radio chart, that song is number 18 in the whole country. And I didn't expect anybody to like that song. Like I thought that song was just, that's, That's the shocking. one song I did just for the community. I'm like, nah, this one's for us. The rest of the album's for the world. This is just for us. But that, that but that's not shocking because one, it, it, it's like everybody likes controversy. So that that's your world star moment. But more importantly, the people whose names you shouted out, you actually gave them publicity, and now people want to know who the hell is he talking about. So yeah. you brought a lot of light to a lot of people who did not have light on them before. Yeah, that, that's what I told them too. I, I said, "Listen, even though I don't even like most of you niggas, don't underestimate for the fact that I'm moving the culture forward still by introducing all of you to audiences that would never have ever heard your name outside of this song." Fact, because I mean, I mean, think about it. Because that's something I want to ask you about the conscious community and something that, 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 that I think and I would love for you to teach me tonight. Uh, when it comes, when it comes to it though, a lot of people who I talk to don't know Sonetta, but I do. You know what I'm saying? Because I watch videos. I've done studies. A lot of people don't know Polite for consciousness. They know him for being on, um, 105. You know what I'm saying? Talking right. about certain, yeah. talking about um finances, so that's not really a conscious thing. And conscious community, the conscience, I call it the so-called conscious community because I, I I feel the word community is like not really being used the way it should be used in that title. Correct. But I digress. It really apply, but go yeah, yeah go ahead. What? So so I digress. Like, like I'm saying, like outside of the New York, New Jersey area where you have like the or, or like the Chicago or areas like that are the big cities. A lot of people who are like regular and and like um 
Yeah, not they on the big city like that. They don't know who these people are. Yeah, that's a fact. So, so I mean, like that 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 brings light to them and the conscious community. But see, my question is, what the hell is a conscious community if the community seems to be so at war against each other and not really sharpening each other's blades to make the people better? Well, well, see, what happens is is we're in the middle of infiltration. This is what mm -hmm. it looks like. This is what it looks like. See, we're used to looking at certain things in historical lenses. So when we look at certain organizations being infiltrated in the past, be it the Panthers or who, whatever group, we yeah. know that government agents go into these groups, and when they go into these groups, they they undermine the group and turn the members in the group against each other. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but we're used to seeing that from hindsight. In hindsight, you watch the documentary and they name the agents. Like, we can watch the Malcolm X story on Netflix, and now we know it was the Muslim brothers from the mosque in Jersey. We know that there were six different agencies that were undercover at the ballroom. Like, we know all those things. Right. But in real time, though, it's totally different. You know what That's I'm saying? In real time, what it looks like is just an unexplainable chaos that you can't put your finger on. But what well, it is is you have a handful of provocateurs that mm -hmm. works for the people that have been undercover in the community, and all they do, see, what I tell people is the most telling thing in mm -hmm. our new world, which they haven't made adjustments for, and this is why it's easy to tell who's who. I said because we have what's called a digital footprint. So mm -hmm. you can go down everybody's timeline, and what happens is there's a space where everybody's entitled to their own amount of BS. We'll just, you know, whatever that BS is, you're entitled to your, your nigga moments, your BS, your, you know, whatever, your ratchetness, right, your own, to your own degree. But right, right. There should still be, if you're supposed to be, now back to titles again, if you're putting the title on that you're a community activist in some shape, form, or fashion, or you're a teacher right. or a leader, whatever the case you want to call it, we should be able to go through your timeline without the sound of your voice. We should just be able to go through your timeline and look at the titles of your YouTube videos or the, or the read the post under your Instagram and see a running scene. So if you go through my timeline for the last 15 years, you'll see, oh, yeah, this beef with this guy, expose this, this and that, and some music stuff here, and some basketball stuff here. But for the most part, you're going to see me fighting diabetes, fighting cancer, fighting this, fighting, like, just, you're going to see in my timeline immediately, like, oh, this is the health guy, this is what he does. Okay, um, you'll see me, like, opening schools. you see me in, you know, like, you'll see me on the street working with, like, these are things you'll be able to see from my timeline. Some and as much appreciated, really? Go ahead, what'd you say? I said, and as much appreciated, believe me. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. But, no, no, on the flip side, what I'm saying is, when you go through some people's timelines, you can go back on their timeline literally for five or ten years and they don't have anything on their timeline but exposing this guy, exposing that guy. Uh, this guy's a fraud. This guy, like, nothing else. Like, it's cool if you have those types of videos in the mix of what it is you're doing to contribute to the community, but if that is all you do, then we got to start saying to ourselves, wait a minute, this guy's not in the community. This guy is here to bring down the community. Look at his timeline. He has videos attacking every single individual in the community. In fact, no. if you look at certain people's timeline, they're only attacking other black people, and that's all that they do. So you got to say, go ahead. 
No, because that's exactly what I mean when I say, when I hear, I remember when I was introduced to the conscience community, and shout out to Doggy Diamonds, because I've seen a lot of his videos when I was younger, and, that, and that's somebody I respect. When I look at um, the conscious community, I just break down what it is. Conscious means of thought. You know, you have, a, you have a, a certain level of thinking, and community means to come together, to commune. That's the main word in it. And when I look at it, I'm thinking of the early, the early, um, like back in the day, before all of us, in the ancient civilizations of the, of the East, college was when men would come together with different philosophies, and it was, what we call debate is not what they did, but they would debate. And they would bring up their philosophies, have their students and everybody take notes. Then for a week, they would go back and learn and teach and shop for themselves and then come back with rebuttals. Now with that, nowadays, it's I'm right, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong, and that's not community. That's barbary. That's, 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 that's butchery of the word community because there's no growth. It, it, it turns into pick sides without knowledge being gained. Right, and there's, but that's what I'm saying. This is not by mistake. It's by mm -hmm. design. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the community, you'll see a specific group of individuals, and you'll see that they will pretend to have a belief system just in order to attack another belief system. So, for instance, if you look at the Amin Ra squad, now, mm -hmm. the information has come out that the leader of the Amin Ra squad is actually a Marine from Fort Detrick. And so, like I said, a lot of the information is leaking, and people are finding out who's who. But initially, we get it, uh, introduced to these guys as the Amin Ra squad, the guys who, um, you know, they represent the ancient comedic ideology, and, you know, they're here to educate the people. Really quickly, we notice that the only thing they're doing is using the comedic philosophy to attack black people who have Bible subscription, whether they are a Christian, a Catholic, an Israelite, whatever, then to attack black Islamic groups, Nation of Islam, the, you know, the Moorish uh, brothers and sisters, the, the you know, or attack alternative or lesser less less popular spiritual systems like what we have from the Caribbean and you know Haiti and Cuba and some of these other so we're looking at this and I one of the first people to notice what's going on because I'm from the street so I know I know a hustle when I see it. So I'm like, right. wait a minute, that's not them guys Wait a minute, hold on. I speak to these guys off camera and behind the scenes. None of these niggas believe in nothing comedic at all. All this shit is fake. So immediately, mm. I'm the black sheep. I'm like, wait, they're like, oh, God, Inky is trying to explore. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just saying you can, you can create a, you can, I'm not perfect. So there's a million imperfect things you could point out about me. But right. if you come live with me and hang out with me, I'm really about what I'm saying. So there may be other things going on in my life, but I'm definitely a vegan. You're not going to see me, like, eating ribs. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely about the herbs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm definitely about those things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm definitely a, a full-time father. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those things that I stand on, that's that's really me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's, so wait, 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 let's flip that. Years later, oh, okay, wait, okay. years later, years later, now – we find out that these same guys are not even um, comedic because after they attacked every other group, they then turned around and said, we're not really comedic and started to attack the people that was representing Kemet that most of started representing comedic ideology following them. And, now, and now these are the very same guys who are promoting blind vaccinations. Wow. You know, they're they're promoting Bill Gates. Like, literally, if we go on their timelines in the last 48 hours, they're actually defending Bill Gates, saying that Bill Gates, like, like it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's, just, it's really crazy, but it's a beautiful thing in the long run because people have taken their masks off during quarantine. So my, my bad. I mean, 
Because I was getting long-winded, you know what I'm saying? So, my bad. It, it, it's not the fact that you're long-winded. I love the information because, like I said, I've been wanting to meet and talk with you for a long time. So this is cool. But the thing is, the, the interview is not really about them. I kind of want to focus on you more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm glad that you said when people see you, they can see that life that you live because you don't just talk it, you walk it. You know, like my man said, don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know for a fact that you live what you say because even you have, um, you wrote and written books. And yeah. tell me about, is it, is it, um, Nutrition or diet for your hapolite? Talk about that. Eat, like, I want to know about eat, that yeah. more. Eat right for your hapolite. Eat right, right for your hapolite. So, yeah, tell yeah, me about so that. It's a it's a multi layered book. So, at its most basic, what it does is it walks you through. Um, well, first, early on in the book, I talk about what research. Is. That's one thing I wanted to clear up because I realized that so many people use the term research. Most of them have no idea what real research actually is. So they can't mm -hmm. even distinguish it when they see it. So the first thing is it's like a few pages on what actual research is, you know, mixed methods, quantitative, qualitative, like, you know, just the basics of what research is, just so that people could use the book for a research tool but I want them to know how to do that. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. in there. Then we go into the foods, vitamins, minerals. We go into the biochemistry behind those things. We break mm. that down. And then a little more than half of the book is centered on um, all of the protocols that you would need in, you know, your day-to-day -day life. So, um, where we've had previous um, holistic healers and, and, and not just holistic hustlers, but real healers that really are known for changing people's lives, like Sabi and some of the others. When Sabi left, most of his information left with him. Unfortunately, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of information that's with Ma'a. Shout out to my and her family um, because she was making the formulas for Dr. Sadie for a long time early on when he first started. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's even more information with Mama Pill because that was his right-hand man. I mean, she's a woman, but um, just you, euphemistically speaking so people understand, like, she was his right-hand man. She was with him everywhere. She was the first one actually deployed out to a, um, a person that they didn't even know at the time had a, they found that out later. At the time, it was pneumonia. Like, I, I don't think people really understand how similar this coronavirus situation is to the AIDS outbreak. That's why one of the things I yeah. warned people about early on was be mindful of the solution. Because when AIDS hit, everybody panicked. And when you panic, you throw the law out the window because you want now, 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 now. Right? But there's laws right. in place that help keep you safe. Like, there's a testing period. There's a this, there's a that. So when we get all panicky and we're like, no, we need a solution now. Don't worry about testing. Just give us now. That comes with ramifications. So when AIDS hit, the same type of fear and, you know, craziness went out, and they came with a drug called AZT. Everybody that took mm -hmm. the AZT died, almost 100%. Everybody that took AZT died, bang. The AZT was killing people, they found out. And then they discontinued the AZT and came up with some new stuff, with, you know, whatever they developed from there. But that first solution wiped folks out. Right. And now with the hydrochloroquine or the Plaquenil um, that they went ahead and rushed out there, you know, the malaria drug that, that uh, they were using for lupus and other things, the doctors are now saying that that is causing people to have um, heart palpitations, heart murmurs, and irregular heartbeats. So although mm. it may save the lungs, it may destroy the heart. <laughs> wow. You know, wow. Um, that, that's so this, this, this is why I'm saying people got to be, you know, the, the, the only way to really be safe or as safe as it can be because people forget that we're animals and this is a jungle. Although we've built it up with concrete and buildings and houses and all this stuff, 
we still animals, and this is still the wild. We've, we've tamed our version of wild, but we're still in the wild. So the best that you really can do is get this information and do the things that keeps your body in the best condition possible to adapt to what things pop up because viruses are going to pop up. That's that's a part of life. That's a part of our ecosystem, yeah. you know, but yeah. how our body responds to those viruses means everything. So for the average person who's learning or wants to learn about health, where should they start first and then grow their knowledge from there? Because within myself, I don't know a lot of things. I know a little bit because my mom was a nurse, and, you know, my mom passed away. But whatever knowledge she had, she showed me a little bit of it. You know, I didn't have school training like her. You know what I'm saying? And then as I progressed in life, I learned about veganism, vegetarianism, pescatarianism, and I learned about the foods that we put in our bodies and, you know, things of that nature. But I'm not well, well astute, but I do answer questions. For the person who does not know and they want to start very small, what do you tell them? Watch my page. Okay. Go to my YouTube and just start watching the videos. Just because, see, here's the thing: information is the most important thing. Yes. Yeah, so it is. before you get to a eat this or a don't eat that, like that's what people, most people rush. Like here's the food list: eat these things, or they'll go with the opposite approach, which is these things are not healthy for you. They're non-GMO. They're you know non-organic. They're they're acidic. They're toxic. They're Nah, that's not the way to start because that never lasts. Everybody right. everybody has taste buds and everybody has a microbiome. Your microbiome, um, for people who aren't familiar with the term microbiome, you probably are familiar with what's called good bacteria, right? You got probiotics. Right. So you got probiotics, which is which actually is not just bacteria. Probiotics is really more like, all of the microorganisms, right? Because there's a lot more than like so. The the better term is microorganism or microbiome, but we're more familiar okay. with a uh, good bacteria. Like um, probiotics is making its way around right now, right? Uh -huh. um, so people are, are even more familiar with that term too. Um, and now prebiotics is coming in, right? But prebiotics uh -huh. is not actual uh, organisms is food for organisms. So prebiotics okay. is actually fiber, natural fiber from actual wild plants. So that's actually what feeds the, the, the microbiome. But anyway, so everybody's got a different set of microorganisms that live on their skin and inside their body. Mm -hmm. That right there controls what you eat, like it controls what you crave to the point where every, I would say every 21 days to every 28 days, if you, um, like for instance, say for instance, after this conversation, I managed to touch somebody's soul and they say, you know what, I'm going vegan right now. Uh -huh. They're going to go vegan based on information. But their taste buds and their microorganisms in their body are still based on the meat, the soda, like whatever it is that they currently eat. And so right. when you step outside that, the things that you eat are going to taste nasty. Or not, if right. not nasty, you'll have an aversion to certain things because you don't have the taste buds for them and you don't have the microorganisms that crave those things either. So in right. that 21 to 28-day window, it's crucial that your mind focus on the benefits of eating certain things and not eating certain things to get you over that hump until your body starts to recreate your, test, your taste buds and you start to repopulate your microorganism family with different, uh, you know, different microorganisms and then you'll start to crave the new things. Like for people that have never had them, they don't really eat much fruits or vegetables. If they start drinking smoothies, 
after a couple of days of drinking smoothies, they're going to start craving smoothies. They're going to start walking around like, damn, I want me a smoothie right now. You know, wow. and so it's, it's because their taste buds are changing and their microorganisms are changing. So if you feed somebody that's used to eating fast food and meat and all kind of crazy stuff with salad, well, they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, that's, they're going to be like, oh, this is the salad. It's not filling me up. Or, or you know, I don't, I, yeah. it's blame. I don't like the taste and all the stuff. Because they don't have the buds for it. And and they got to they gotta take time to develop that. So the information is key. That's the main thing. Like, people ask me all the time, like, what do we do about our children? Well, the reason our children are so hard to deal with is because we take the wrong approach. We will absorb information for a month, six months, a year before we make a change. So right. it's the information that's built up in us that gives us the ability to make the change. Now, as soon as we make the change, we want to go back to the crib and enforce that on our wives and children. Or if we're the wife, we want to enforce that on our husbands and our children as if, They've been absorbing the information, so they're ready to make the change with you. No, it's not how it goes. So the main thing is I just promote the information. And depending on the audience, I tailor the information to what it is that they like in life. You know, if I'm talking to a young group of athletes, then I talk to them about, you know, how nutrition affects their performance. If I'm talking to, you know, like – uh I don't necessarily want to say people from the street, but I'll say, you know, like people into turning up, you know what I'm saying? I'll talk to them about how nutrition helps them to do that and helps them to avoid certain problems that, that comes along with that later on, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to be 18, 19, 20, partying and doing, you know, turning up, going crazy, but then by the time you're 25, you know, you wake up in the morning and your penis don't get hard no more. Like, these are things that, you know, we, we want to have fun, but we don't want to, you know what I'm saying, like, be reckless. Like, we want to have continued fun. Like, you don't want to just have fun for two, three, four years and then pay for it for 25 years. You know what I'm saying? So just depends yes, on the exactly. audience. I try to speak to the things that I know are important to people. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you get so sciencey, and the people you're talking to may only be concerned with video games and smoking weed. Like, you have to speak yeah. in their language, you know what I'm saying? Or, or if they just only, you know, the only thing important in their life is doing their push-up, hitting the gym, and getting a, you know, basketball scholarship for college, you got to speak that language. So, you know, I just try to uh, just just speak to, you know, the benefits and, and just, you know, in specific, you know, to what people are dealing with and, and just try to help them out from there and, keep everything super transparent so they're consuming the information first and then they're finding the changes and how to modify and get, you know, really really just get the most out of their life for whatever their personal goals are. And that's facts because even the scriptures tell us that we should meet people on their level. And that's one thing I tell a lot of people, like, yo, you mad smart, but you're not, we're not on the same level right now because you're up here or I'm down here or vice versa. And we're not really meeting so that we can agree to disagree or agree in unison. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Yeah. And and that, and that happens a lot when, in music because being that you say you did an album, sometimes to bring people in, you have to meet them at their level. And you say you did the right. one song, I did that the gun, to just bring them in. You know, like maybe like maybe you bring people in the, on other people's identifications and understanding. You have other music that will hit the people on what they know now so then they can decide whether they'll go forward. Like artificial intelligence, when people think about that, it's like, okay, you're talking about robots and space and stuff where actually you're talking in reference to a lady and Instagram tags and things. What was the yeah. message you wanted to come, you come up with artificial intelligence? Uh, conversation with my 10-year-old son, believe it or not. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm talking to him and I'm telling him about girls and, like, it's just like a totally different world. I'm like, bro, let me tell you, the world I'm from, like, we had to speak to girls. I know that's like going extinct in your world. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, y'all doing, you know, y'all sending a DM or y'all sending an Instagram. Like, 
now. We had to actually, like, what modern-day stalking is, like, if, like, the <laughs> modern-day stalking laws, literally half the planet would not be here if those were intact 20 years, even just 20 years ago. Because that's what yep. you did. Like, literally, if you liked the girl, you had to damn near find her route to and from school, unless y'all was in school together. And then you had to, like, situate yourself somewhere along her route, and she wasn't talking to you right away, so that's a wrap. So you had to, like, be right there where she get off the train at or get off the bus at and just be like, hey, honey, show him something. Ooh, and she's gone. But then the next day, you know, she's coming back, and after you do that maybe three, four times, she might stand there for five or ten minutes and still shoot you down, but... You know, at least now she's entertaining you for five, ten minutes till you know, her parents might, you know, you, you know, if she outside too long, they're going, you know, so. But then you cultivate a little relationship, and y'all get a little older, and before you know it, you know, you got five or ten bucks, and you, you know, take her around the corner to the movie, and, you know, you, you cultivate and you built a relationship from scratch with a girl, and that was it. Nowadays, it's different, like you. You know, you flashing your penis on her on Instagram, or you sending some nasty shit on her TikTok, or like I'm like, yo, this is this is not what it is. So I'm trying to tell him, I'm like, bro, this is, you got to be a gentleman. You have to speak to women. You have to make eye contact. Like I'm trying to give him that level of the game, and he's like, yeah, but dad, you know, this is kind of how people doing it, and you know, I'm not even really thinking about girls right now, but. I'm like, no, no, now is the time we have to have this combo because if I wait until you're interested in girls, then there will be a window from where you're trying to get active with no info. Like, I know, I need you to get the info now so when you get ready to get active, you'll know how to do that respectfully. You know what I'm saying? Because the world is even changing where now look, we look at social distancing. Stay six feet away from me. Stay 13 feet away from me and all kinds of food like so I'm like, you you got to learn this old school stuff. And then there was a whole other level to our conversation where it got a little more serious because I said, now, you know, there's one level to being, you know, uh, what is it called? Catfish. So catfish is a part of the song, right? Because when I say, yeah. uh, I put the catfish on the screen with the chorus and I'm like, there's a level to catfishing where it's like, okay, I put a different picture on there. That's not really me, but, you know, whatever, whatever. But then there's another level. Because there's one level where you're ashamed of yourself or you got low self-esteem and you try to, like, fake it a little bit or you use filters or, you know, that's still catfishing, but it's at a really innocent level. But then there's another level yeah. where you do that same type of thing to get people's information to rob them, scam them. Uh, and uh -huh. then there's another level where they're, like, kidnapping folks and body stuff and this, this, and that. So I'm like, you guys have a lot more to worry about than we did. See, because of the way we cultivated relationships back in the day, there was no way to really trick us. Now you guys live in a world where, and, and I'm not knocking Dwayne Wade or Gabrielle Union, what they do with their family, their lifestyle, whatever. I'm just saying to parents, whenever I think about it, I'm like, prepare your children because they're going to grow up in a world we didn't. So, prime example. You may have, like, for instance, I have 10 children, right? So when I say that, people go, wow, that's crazy. You know why? Because they have low, uh, they have a very low value of black family. So immediately as a black man, if you say you have 10 children, the picture that pops into everybody's mind is he has 10 baby mothers. Yep, that's true. You know what I'm saying? But... Eight of my ten children were with the same woman, my high school sweetheart, right? And so I'm trying to explain this to, to, to my son Chase. I'm like, listen, bro, you guys are going to grow up in a world where you might wind up with your high school sweetheart. You're a handsome guy. You know, you got straight teeth. People like you. You know, you, you're not, it's not going to be tough for you to find the girl you want. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you may have your high school sweetheart. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to wind up happening. In your world, there's going to be a lot more people than in my world that cannot have babies. And you Especially with the coronavirus, you're right. 
Well, no, 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 no. Before we even get to coronavirus, because people are not even, people aren't even there yet learning that the coronavirus attacks the reproductive system, the kidney, the liver, and some other things. But that's another conversation. But what I'm talking about is that you will be in a relationship. You have the possibility to be in a relationship with a girl in high school that was not born a girl. Because there yeah. are rich people that are getting children sex changes. And they're not telling people because there are no laws about that. I feel like just like there should be this, like how they got it with the sex offenders, you got to let, if you're a, a different, you know, whatever the, the right thing is to call the people, the, you know, if you're, you got to announce that. You know, because as it stands now, like Dwayne Wade, he can turn his son into a, a, a daughter. She'll be in school, you know, and if she goes to a school where people don't know who she is or whatever the case may be, you know, she'll get a boyfriend. I mean, because there's someone for everyone, she'll get a boyfriend. And, you know, they'll be, you know, in love, whatever. And at some point, you know, he'll want to get married or engaged. Or you know how we do. We might just want to have babies and not even think about marriage because of the institution and the contract and all that kind of stuff. And um, right. won't be able to have babies. And she may keep the secret, like, hey, you know, I'm going to keep this secret. You know, we'll just adopt. You know, she may just push adoption. Or, hey, you know, we'll try some alternative whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you don't even know you're not having babies, not because something's wrong with you or something's wrong with her, but because the her was really a him. And so yeah. that never existed existed in our world. Not in no 16, 15, 14 like this. It wasn't nobody having no sex changes at 12 and 13 years old. Right. You know, right. but now these are realistic things that we have to talk to our children about because otherwise, and, and these are very uncomfortable. It's like there are people that are going to hear me talking about this that feel uncomfortable because these are uncomfortable conversations. But as a parent in today's world, if you don't have the uncomfortable conversation with your child, they're unprepared for the world because this is the world that we live in. You yep. know what I mean? So yep, all of right. these are, so anyway, that's kind of the conversation. Anyway, I know I see how I get along with it, but that's the conversation oh, that started the song Artificial Intelligence. And the song is really about people um you know, socializing through computers and not direct contact and the new sex industry. Yeah. yeah. Because artificial intelligence, many people don't understand. Like, when we hear artificial intelligence, a lot of people go right to Illuminati talk. You know what I'm saying? But in the real world, outside of conspiracy theory world, um, the major contributors to Artificial intelligence are the video game community and the porn community. And mm -hmm. the sex dolls right now are um, very... A like, big industry. Man, and those it's sex dolls industry. look amazing. I mean, look amazing. Like, they, you tailor make them to how you want to make them. And you can dress them how you want to dress them, make their skin whatever color, and... Now they have them where they talk to you. And so I've seen a uh, I've seen a case where somebody had a sex doll and he did something and the thing clamped on their neck and choked them to death. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of accidents with them because we inter integrating it into the society. So you know it's not really no regulation. You know it's gonna be you know, but that's where the AI is going. And when you talk about like. Um, the social distancing and all that. Coronavirus, first of all, coronavirus is not going anywhere. For anybody that's confused and you might think coronavirus is going to go anywhere, it is not. Coronavirus is here to stay because coronavirus has always been here. Coronavirus, <laughs> coronavirus is the largest family of RNA viruses. So they're mm -hmm. not going anywhere, you know, um, 
So this social distancing thing is only going to further increase the porn industry. Like, people talk about OnlyFans, but OnlyFans, the only reason OnlyFans, people talk about that so much is because so many young minority women are making a huge sum of money over this that people are hating on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's, it's just really just pure hate to them young like, that's a whole lane. And I'm not supporting porn, whatever the case may be, but I'm like, you know what? That is a very non-aggressive means that a single woman can safely do. Like, if that's, if that's your bag, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot safer and cleaner than working in an actual strip club. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things you got to be exposed to to go to that strip club that you don't have to be in front of your computer. You know, it's a very safe environment for the women. You know what I mean? And um, that's the only thing. But the entire porn industry is going through the roof right now. Going through the roof right now. They're selling more dolls, more porn subscriptions, more everything because people are quarantined. Yeah, we were meant to be social creatures and to be apart from each other. You will drive the mind and the body well, out of its natural harmony. Well, listen, here's the thing, and, and I'm going to wrap up because I know I've been talking to y'all for like an hour, and i got to make these babies some dinner, but here's the thing with that. As people distance themselves from each other, we lose genetic diversity. As people right. lose genetic diversity, they lose group immunity. So a lot of what's happening right now is going to continue into the future. We're actually not... Um, it's not so much that new viruses are going to be popping up. It's that the old viruses that we had grown strong to the point where they couldn't necessarily bring us down, our bodies are weakening. Our immune systems are weakening. So these old guys will be making a comeback, like a mm. lot of other viruses that are just quietly making a comeback, like gonorrhea and some of these other things, you know, staph infections. It's a lot of stuff just recircling. Because we're getting weaker, <laughs> yeah. going backwards. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Mm. That's very unfortunate to know, and it's sad. So I know you said you had to go take care of your babies, and that's very important. And also, I want to meet you in person. So we'll talk about that probably offline and everything so people who are listening don't have that information. But please, give everybody your social medias because what you dropped was some good information and they may want some more. Right. Well, let me say this because we never got to it. The album is Sound Becomes Light. It's on every platform. Sound Becomes Light. All you got to do is go on any platform and type my name in, Dr. Inky. And... I got podcasts, music, everything will pop up, right? So go go there, but also type in Dr. Inky on Instagram and type in Dr. Inky on YouTube. Um, uh, take it a step further, and you can call me or text. You may text is better, 833-777-6543. And you can also email me at ministerinky at gmail.com. The website is unitedplaceofamerica.org. And, uh, yep, that's it. No, that's not it. That's only the beginning because you're teaching and information is the fuel that people need to continue their lives. But you wanted to say something else? No, what city are you in? I'm in New Jersey. Oh, we're going to definitely link. I just, I recorded damn near half the album in East Orange. Oh, I see you right around the corner. I'm in Orange. So you know, all you got to do is just go. We just got to hook up. That's all. Yeah, my <laughs> folks out there. So I'm here. Yeah, like, I'm super... Super accessible and local, and it's, it's, you know what I mean? So we'll definitely link up. Definitely. Before you get off the line, though, I want to ask you three questions. And these are three questions about – I usually do five, but this has been kind of long, and I know you have to go, but I want to ask you three questions. And um, shout-out to you and your movement, UnitedPlantsOfAmerica.org, and we tell everybody, please do not stream the music. Streaming is good, but if you hear somebody that you respect and that you like, please purchase their music because money – keeps the culture going forward and it helps put food in their children's mouths and it helps them build their, their platforms. So here's the top three, the, the, the three questions I want to ask you. The first question is, what is the most important message a man can learn in today's society? Take care of your children. 
Okay. Take care of your children with time, not money. Facts. Question number two. When it comes to education, what is the most important book a person can learn to educate themselves? Uh, the Bible. Okay. I respect that. I say the Bible. And here's my last Bible. Look, look, look. I'll do it like this. I'll give people three books, and they could choose which one works best for them. And then the second okay. book would be my book. So the first, the first choice would be one of these three books, the Bible, the Quran, or the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Okay. So I would say one of those three, and then the second book would be Eat Right for Your Haplotype by me. And that's available on Amazon, correct? No, 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 no. They got to come to my website, United Plates, like the plates you eat off, United Plates of uh -huh. America. Org. And that's even better. So make sure everybody out there listening, you go to the website and buy the book and support this man and his family. The last question I want to ask you is the most important question to ask every um every interview. And the question is, pardon me, the question is, in 2,000 years, you're not going to be here, but your line could be here. Um, like you said about digital footprints and everything that you put together, whether it's your music, your videos, or your book. What, what what is your legacy, and how did you make the world better? And for you, not only because you did music, but because you taught life. How? What is your legacy, and how was the world better because you existed and you did what you did? Um. Well, my dad told me just make yourself stronger today than you were yesterday. Mm. So that's what I encourage people. And you know, you got the body, but you also have the mind. So he told me, even if you just do 10 push-ups today, you're stronger than you was yesterday. Even if you just read two pages of a book, you're smarter than you were yesterday. So that's my thing. Everybody just don't let days catch you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times days catch us where days and days is going by, and we haven't done anything for our own personal growth or enlightenment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure every single day, you do one small exercise, even if it's literally, even if it's literally just two or three push-ups or two jumping jacks or just walk into the store, you know, read a book. You know, not, not a book, read a, a page out of a book, just a little something, something, just a little something, you know, and, and just, just keep it at that, you know, that bare minimum so that days aren't going by where you haven't contributed to yourself at all because that's the main thing. A lot of times we have ideas about what we'd like to do for ourselves in the world, but eating day to day kind of, you know, <laughs> the rat race overtakes it, and you can't allow that to happen. You know, when the wind blows in your face, when you're walking down the block, you don't stop walking. You just walk harder, you know. So that's mm -hmm. what people got to learn how to do. When that wind blows in your face, you got to duck your head down and walk harder. Facts. So for everybody out there, once again, this is Heritage Hip Hop, and we like to thank Dr. Inky, Inky for coming on our, pro, our platform, and you are always invited back, especially when we talk about health and community things, because Heritage Hip Hop is not about beats and, mute, and, and rhymes. We're about the hip hop community and our culture. So hey. for everybody out there listening, oh, oh Brad, say what you want to say, bro. That's the, that, no, that's the missing part of hip hop. I'm trying to figure out, like, when did the teacher get kicked out of the hip hop? Like, like, they still promote the dancing, still the DJ, still the rap, still the – I'm like, but wait a minute. What happened to the, the, the teacher, the head? Man. You know, so that's like you know what happened? Dancing. You know what happened? Everybody chased the bag only only to find out that the bag was half full. <laughs> so it ain't really what they think. So once again – Make sure you support the artists. Make sure you support the culture, and make sure you support the platform. Dr. Inky and I, we say peace, and we out. Yes, sir. Bro, thank Thanks. you for coming on, man. I appreciate you for this, and yes, I really do want to want to want to sit and talk with you. Definitely. Well, let's. Once again, we thank you for listening to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode was deep for me because mental health, physical health emotional health 
every type of health is under attack right now during COVID-19. And with the loss of people left and right beside us, let's make sure we're doing what we have to do to take care of our physical, spiritual, mental, emotional personalities, mind, bodies, and spirits so we can be an aid not only to ourselves but to other people. I would like to say rest in peace to everyone who has passed away and may the most high's blessings overflow to those who have been affected that have lost family friends and loved ones during this time heritage hip-hop partners with the community and making sure we get the message of hope out and we want everyone to survive with that being said heritage hip-hop is brought to you by a collective of individuals that work hard to make everything happen our partners fatty's place for anyone leading virtual assistance to make their social media presence grow legitly contact fatty's place on instagram at f-a-d-d-y-s-p-l-a-c-e for promotion placement and marketing hit up wildfire marketing on instagram at f-i-r-e-j-a-w-s that's fire jaws a prolific mc who studied the game of marketing and made himself not only a name but a movement diamonds entertainment llc sports gentlemen hip-hop and culture brought to the entertainment world that's brought to you by lex diamonds and you can hit him on instagram at d-i-e-m-e-n-z entertainment llc once again you can also get in contact for financial literacy and help with debt transparent credit repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com or you can call them at 862-250-5122 and tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you. You can support Heritage Hip Hop by becoming a member of our website which is www.heritagehiphop.com. Membership is free and all members get exclusives. Not only that, we have a YouTube page. You can follow us on YouTube. We have a cash app which is dollar sign k-a-r-e-v-y-a-h these donations are used to build the platform for more equipment bigger and better things and to continue our growth and appreciation of the hip-hop culture if you're looking to buy apparel we have a store www.storefrontier.com forward slash heritage hip-hop where you could buy some apparel and we also have a sister store new jersey black print which is storefrontier.com slash new jersey black print all one word thank you for listening to the heritage hip-hop podcast we're glad to be able to bring you quality entertainment and knowledge of the hip-hop culture by people in the hip-hop culture so once again please continue to follow the movement and stay safe during the covid 19 epidemic and pandemic that we're going through with that being said, new shows are coming, international artists, and the artists that are going to become your new favorites as time passes on. So with that, we say peace, and we out.